Do you wish that Nina could tell the future? Yeah, me too. Unfortunately, the only future that this Nina cares about is the next time she gets to play in the snow. Good news for us, Nina the Software has a neat plugin that looks into the future for us called Orbuculum. Also speaking of lazy things, Orbuculum has another neat feature that helps make sure you take just the right number of each channel filter for your camera. Hi, I'm Aaron and welcome to Alaskan Astro. We're taking a look at each of the Nina plugins, which is briefly what they do and why you'd want to use them. If you're confused, feel free to take a look at the introduction video to this series that talks about Nina plugins in general. Orbuculum is a pretty straightforward plugin that adds two useful features to Nina. Let's talk about that first one. One of the most commonly requested features was the ability to jump to the next target only when it's ready to shoot. Orbuculum does this by adding a couple useful loop conditions to the advanced sequencer. Those loop conditions are loop while next target is below altitude, loop while next target is below horizon, loop while hour angle, and loop while next target hour angle. For those who aren't familiar, the advanced sequencer works best in loops. These are just sets of instructions that repeat themselves until something defined condition is met and then it moves on to the next set of instructions. A loop can be as simple as take one exposure and just keep repeating that until the condition is met or as complicated as your mind can come up with. If you're using a mono camera, a really common loop is to shoot a certain number of luminance subs, maybe three loom subs, and then RGB, so LLL RGB, and just keep looping that until the condition is met or looping through all your show filters. So naturally, we want to shoot objects when they're above the ground, and usually a little bit higher than that too. And unless your scope is mounted somewhere on top of a mountain or in West Texas, you probably have some trees or obstructions that block at least part of the sky. In Nina, one of the most basic ways to control your loops is to just tell it to keep looping until your object drops down below a certain altitude or until it runs into an obstruction that you've set up in a custom horizon file. So what's special about Orbuculum is that it looks at the position of your next object and uses that to stop your loop. So this is really useful if you have a filler target that you don't care as much about, but you'd still like to shoot it. And then you have one target that you really do care about and you want to get every minute on that that you can. So for instance, let's show this situation. We have M81, M82 as our beginner target, our filler target. It's above the horizon as soon as sun sets, so we can start shooting it and just keep going. But let's say we really care about shooting the Leo triplet. So we can set up our sequence so that as soon as it clears the trees there, our sequence starts looping on that and going on to that one and gives up on Bodes and Cigar, even though they're still well above the horizon. We want to get our time on this one. Or if you don't have a custom horizon or you don't really have obstructions in the way, you can just tell it to start looping when the Leo triplet gets above 30 degrees above the horizon. So that's what Orbi's loop while next target is below altitude or below horizon loop conditions let you do lets you shoot your filler target as long as you want, and then you switch over to your main target as soon as it's in prime position. So this is so much nicer than back in the dark ages when we had to do all kinds of guesstimating and counting subs and guessing at how many we could get before the next target comes up, and if your dithers take too long to recover or you have extra autofocus runs, you're hitting trees or you're missing hours of the target you could have been shooting. This is so nice in Nina 2.0 with Orbuculum that it does all of this math for you and every time you restart Nina it's automatically recalculating all those altitudes and things and you don't have to do any of the work. This is also really nice if you have a target that just peaks between some trees for a few minutes each night but you still want to try and shoot it. This just takes all the guesswork out of it. The loop while hour angle and loop while next target hour angle are the same idea, they're just a different condition that's ending that loop. Maybe your mount misbehaves when it's in a certain position, or you need to do something that helps you avoid crashing into a tripod leg. A couple little heads up here. If you include one of these conditions and you don't have a next target, it doesn't like that. It'll give you this angry warning and it'll tell you that scrying failed, no future target found, and it would immediately end that loop. So don't do that. It makes it pretty clear when you try to start the sequence it's a bad idea. Another thing to know is that 
as soon as that condition is hit, it will jump to the next one. So if you're in the middle of an exposure and suddenly it just stops and moves on to the next target, that is correct behavior as it's designed. Okay, so the other almost unrelated feature of Orbiculum is auto exposure balancing. This just keeps track of how much of each time you've taken for each filter and then does the math to get the ratio exactly how you'd want it. When shooting with a mono camera, it's pretty common for your luminance subs to be shorter than your RGB subs. And it's pretty common to want to get more total luminance time than RGB. So what Orbiculum does is you tell it what the ratio of luminance to RGB or whatever filters you're shooting, and it does the math to figure out how many subs you actually need to take to get that, and then it just does it for you. So you just add this auto balancing exposure instruction instead of a take exposure or smart exposure instruction, and then, so you can see here, I've pretended that I have 120 second loom subs and 180 second RGB subs, and let's say I wanted a three to one ratio. I just set up this grid of my filters, times, time ratio, and then I would start my sequence, and it'll keep track of the progress as it goes through here. And then if it realizes that we don't have enough luminance, it'll take an extra sub or two to fill that in and keep this ratio right how we want it. We could also play around with this with SHO if we want to shoot not as much HA because it's so bright we want more of that faint S2 and O3 signal. It'll do all of that for us. And what's more, say we got a full night in but we realized that we needed to get rid of some of our luminance subs for some reason, they were bloaty or something. You, after saving your sequence at the end of the night, it'll keep track of that progress but you can actually go in and change the progress, say you had to drop, I don't know, half of your loom subs or something. You can get rid of that progress, bring it back down, and then the next time you start shooting, it'll make up for that deficit before moving along with everything else. It's really neat. So really the only word of caution with this is just make sure that at the end of the night you do save your sequence so that the progress is saved because even though this plugin can look into the future, it can't make up for your mistake. That's really about all I have to say about the Orbiculum plugin. Like I said, I'm trying to keep these videos relatively short. If you want, you can subscribe so you don't miss the next in the Nina plugin series. Otherwise, just remember to wear a coat because I'm currently walking on frozen river.